Um, good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's session. My name is Sean Murphy, and I'll be presenting today's session on, on the apprenticeship programmes. So in today's sessions, what we'll be covering are, what are apprenticeships? Is an apprenticeship for you? The apprenticeship levels, the college's apprenticeship offer. We'll discuss employment and the employer. We'll go through the pay structure of the apprenticeship programme. We'll discuss the recruitment process. I'll introduce you to the full apprenticeship team. We'll cover a few testimonies um, from current and um, apprentices and also ones that are finished. There's also a few links that I'd like to share with you to help you research for an apprenticeship. And then finally, we'll discuss next steps and then we'll open up to a Q&A session at the end. So what is an apprenticeship? So an apprenticeship is a real job with real training, meaning you'll be gaining the necessary skills and professional competencies in your chosen career. As well as this, you'll receive a national recognised qualification in your chosen apprenticeship field. Apprentices will work full time for an employer whilst also studying with the college. And as this is a full time role, you'll be employed for a minimum of 30 hours per week. And that will also incorporate any hours you spend on studying as well. 80% of the time on your apprenticeship will be spent working with an employer and 20% of your time will be spent working on off the job training or college training. Now this can take place either at the college campuses or through online study or within your workplace. Apprenticeships are a minimum of one year and six days, but they can actually last up to two, three or even four years. But this will be dependent on the apprenticeship that you choose. All apprenticeship programmes are funded by either the government or by your employer, which means that your learning is fully funded regardless of your age. So why choose an apprenticeship? Well, first of all, you can earn while you learn and the training is free. Though you wouldn't need to commit to the learning throughout the whole programme to achieve your apprenticeship. Apprenticeships look at the skills, behaviours and knowledge that employers are looking for. There's also excellent career opportunities in both the academic and professional side of your career. You can increase your future earning potential. And by undertaking an apprenticeship, you're already within industry, so you can network and build your reputation to further your career. It's also a really good way to get back into the workplace after career break, or if you're looking to retrain in a new area that you're currently doing. Also with an apprenticeship, the way you study will vary from the way you would do if you went for A-levels or a B-tech. So depending on how you best learn, an apprenticeship may be the perfect option for you. So now I want to go through the apprenticeship levels and what the equivalencies would be for you. This is really important when helping decide what level of apprenticeship you want to do, or also if you're deciding to go into university after your apprenticeship, uh, what um, equivalencies you can get. So if you was to start a level two apprenticeship, this will be equivalent to five GCSEs or a full level two qualification. If you started a level three apprenticeship and completed, this will be an equivalency to a two A-levels. If you did a level four apprenticeship, this will be an equivalency to the certificate of higher education or the first year within your university. A level five would be a diploma of higher education. A level six would be an equivalent to a bachelor's degree. And level seven would be equivalent to either postgrad or master's degree. So now I just want to go through the college's current apprenticeship offer. So we currently offer business and professional and construction, engineering and manufacturing. So within business and professional courses, we offer customer services level two, business improvement techniques level two, business administration level three, operations management level five. And within construction, engineering and manufacturing, we offer railway engineering level two, gas engineering level three, 
and lean maintenance operative level two. Now with all those programs you can see on the screen, they have different starting points throughout the whole year. So we've got some of those programs have started in September and we're still in filling into those groups, but we'll also have groups that will be starting from January and February and onwards. If you're also looking for September, they will also be available from September 2021 as well. So now I want to discuss employment and the employer. So to begin with, to enroll as an apprentice and to start the programme, you'll first need to be employed. And you can do this in three ways, really. You can choose to find your own employment, which means you do an outreach to speak with employers on your own um, behalf to find if they're looking to take on any apprentices or employ you directly. You could already be in employment, at which point we can then discuss with your employer a transition onto the apprenticeship programme so that you can upskill or train in a new area within that organisation. But also, we also have some vacancies that you can apply for. Now, with all our employers that we do work with, all of them will go through a health and safety risk assessment and a COVID risk assessment to ensure that each place is a safe work environment for yourselves. As an employed apprentice, you'll receive a contract of employment, which will cover the full duration of your apprenticeship programme. You'd work a minimum of 30 hours per week, but as stated earlier, I would say you'd be looking at somewhere between 35 to 40 hours per week. But this might also vary depending on your age and the type of role that you're doing. You have the same rights and responsibilities as any other member of staff within that organisation. So as much as it has the moniker of an apprenticeship, you will be a fully employed member of staff within that organisation. And we work with many different businesses of all sizes across many sectors and industries. So it's really important that we actually get to meet with you and discuss what roles that you are interested in. Now you'll also be provided a mentor to support you in your training and development. Now this will also be not just in the workplace, but also in the college environment as well. And I wanted to move on to the pay. So all our employers are encouraged to pay the apprentices at least the national minimum wage. However, some employers may choose to pay you between the national minimum wage and the apprenticeship wage. We do have some employers that increase your salary throughout your apprenticeship, but we would establish this prior to you starting to ensure that prior to you working with that employer, like financially, that the apprenticeship makes sense to you. As well as paying you for the hours you complete in the workplace, they'll also pay you for any hours that you complete part of your college program. This, whether that means you're coming into the college, you're doing online study or you're studying within the workplace, those will all be captured within your contract and you'll be paid accordingly. So as you can see, there's a box there will state in what the apprenticeship wages are, and I'll just go through them with you. So the current apprenticeship wage is £4.15 an hour. And this would be covering the first year of your apprenticeship, regardless of how old you are. Now, once you're into your second year of an apprenticeship, if you're under 18, you could be paid a minimum of £4.55 an hour. If you're age 18 to 20, it will go up to £6.45 an hour. If you're 21 to 24, you'd be £8.20 an hour. And if you're 25 and over, it will be the national minimum wage, which currently is at £8.72. Now, every April, the government does look at the pay rates for all those age categories you can see. So it is mindful of you to kind of keep up to date with what those wage scales are but we'll also be on the hand to help you so that if there is any changes to those scales that we can work with yourself and the employer to make sure you're paid in the right wage. Now I wanna go on to the recruitment process. So to apply for the vacancies that we have available, you can do this by going onto the National Apprenticeship Service you can go onto Barnet Southgate College's website where we have a vacancy page, but we also advertise on Indeed as well. As well as this, the next slide should show 
our contact information and you can contact us directly about any of the vacancies that we might have. To help progress your application and to make sure that we can put you on the right path towards your apprenticeship, we have weekly apprenticeship recruitment sessions. We have slot, slots open throughout the week, which we can book candidates in for. Currently, the sessions take place either via phone calls or online via Zoom, similar to this. And this gives both you and the college the opportunity to meet with us, but also to meet with you and discuss opportunities, determine your eligibility for the programme, and to help you find you the right role and the right level of course you should be on. But we'll also provide a copy or go for a presentation on the apprenticeships. We'll cover eligibility checks. Eligibility checks will range from discussing your prior qualifications, prior experiences, what job roles that you're interested in, what qualifications you're looking to go on to, and also your right to work in the UK. Once we've gone through that, we'll set you up with an online initial assessment within Maths and English. This is to help us determine what level you're currently working at and to see if there's any additional support you need on your program, such as functional skills in Maths or English, or potentially just a few sessions to help improve your skills. Finally, once you've had the initial Zoom and or phone call and we've gone through those three bullet points, we'll then set up a one-to-one -one IAG session, which stands for Information, Advice and Guidance. This gives us a chance to go through the specific programmes that you're interested in in greater detail, really go through the interview process and the work trial process so that you're fully aware of what the next steps will be. We can help bolster your CV to make sure that it gives you the best possible chance to find an employer. And also we will discuss all the programmes that I showed earlier to make sure that you're on the right programme. It's at this point I'd now like to introduce you to the three members of the apprenticeship team who will help you on your journey on to the apprenticeship. I would like to state, to, like to start, state again that prior to being enrolled, um, you would need to be find an employer first, but the three people you can see listed there will be a part of that team will help you in that process of finding that employer. So you've got myself, Sean Murphy, my colleague, Nicola Kasapi, and finally, Stuart Edwards that all three of us work with students and employers to try and help match both together um, so we will get vacancies for yourselves but also help you through that process of going through interviews building your cv and getting you to the stage where you can be employable we've got contact information there for you so if you need to contact us directly to book an appointment or to apply for a specific role or just to get general information you can reach us on 0203 Seven six four four triple three, or reach us on apprentice at barnetsouthgate.ac.uk. I also believe that these details will be shared with you um, at the end of the session and put in the chat as well. Now I just want to cover a few testimonies to give you some experience from our current and also apprentices that have finished just so you get to familiarize yourself what it's like to be an apprentice and what you can gain from it. So this is from one of our level two customer service apprentices. And what they say is, my experience at Barnet and Southgate College has been an effective one in terms of the rapid response and support I got from the apprenticeship sales team. In a short matter of time, less than a week, I was already booked for an interview with the help of the team who spent the time with me and had a great communication at all times. They help me become confident and gain employment. This next testimony is from a level three business administration apprentice. So I've been a student at Barnet and Southgate College for a year now, and I'm looking forward to studying further here. It's a great place to learn with lots of resources and great tutors. The course delivery is great and support provided is extremely helpful. I really enjoyed my course at the college and I would highly re recommend it to others looking to continue their learning. So these are a couple of useful links to help you start with your journey for applying for apprenticeships. I'm going to just leave that up for a few seconds and then I'll continue with the rest of the slides.
So once you've met with one of the members of, team, of the apprenticeship team, um, the next will be next steps will be as following. So first of all, we'll ask you to send your CV either to us directly or the apprentice at Barnet and Southgate.ac.uk account. We can then invite you in for the recruitment session. If you've already attended that recruitment session, we'll then use that opportunity to discuss vacancies that we can put you forward for. Now, once we know what vacancies you'd like to be put forward for, and we know what apprenticeship program you'd like to go on to, we will then get your CV sent out to those employers so that we can book you in with an interview. That interviews can take place in different formats. So it could either be physically within the workplace, or it could be either via phone call or online via Zoom. But prior to attending that interview, we'll make sure that you've got the full details so we can prepare you as best as possible. In most cases, it will be the college that will contact you regarding interviews to help set them up. But there are cases where the employer will contact you directly. So it is important that you check your emails daily and answer your phone to private numbers, as some employers' numbers might not show up on your phone. It's important in that stage to make sure that you try and give the best positive response that you can to make sure that you really give a good first impression. We would also ask you to seek employment yourselves and we will help you with that if you need to as well. Is that when find an employer yourself, we're not, we wouldn't ask you to discuss the details of the apprenticeship if you don't feel comfortable. It's more about making sure that you are putting yourself in a position where they want to hire you and then we can speak to the employer to make sure that they've got all the information on the apprenticeship programme. Um, so thank you for listening to me. I'm going to open up for some questions now. So if you bear me two seconds, I'm just going to jump back onto the Zoom. Um, so I'm going to start off with the first question. Um, it says, hi, would I be able to start an apprenticeship in January as my ID card got blocked? Um, I would say you can possibly start an apprenticeship in January, depending on what apprenticeship program that you're looking to go on to. Um, what we'd need to do is invite you in to one of our apprenticeship recruitment sessions so that we can go through the process of processing your application and making sure we're placing you in the right employer and the right um, apprenticeship program. Um, we do have programs starting in January and February, and we've got some programs that are running right now where you can actually infill into the current group. Um, because a few of our courses, a lot of the delivery takes place either online or in the workplace, it means we do have flexibility in, in starting students. So I'm going to move on to the next question. Um, so last year I attended an open day similar to this. Since I already did the initial assessments, would I have to do them again or is all my information saved somewhere? Um, typically, we need to do the assessment once a year. Um, so what we'll need to do is check when you did those assessments. Um, because apprenticeships typically have updated information and guidance each year, we'd still like to have an initial conversation about any changes to make sure that you're completely up to speed and familiar with what's on the programme. Um, so we would kind of run the similar process, but if you've done it within less than 12 months, we, we might not need to do those assessments again. But I think it's something we can discuss in more detail. Um, so next question. So it gave me two seconds. Um, I don't seem to have any more questions come through. Um, oh, sorry, one's just popped in. So what apprenticeships are you offering? Um, so the apprenticeships that we are offering is customer service level two, business administration level three. We also are offering business improvement techniques level two and operations management level five. Then we've got gas engineering level three, lean maintenance operative level two, 
And then finally, we also looking to deliver the railway engineering level two program. Um, so the next question, can we apply for an apprenticeship place by coming to the college? Um, well, at the moment, the vast majority of the apprenticeship team is actually working from home. Um, so typically what we would say is that we would book a session online or via phone call so that we can discuss the apprenticeship and your application. Um, I believe our details are going to be left within the chat so that you can contact us and we're also going to post this on the website and on YouTube so you can actually access it and get the information again. Um, so I think the next step for you would be to kind of contact one of the apprenticeship team, which includes myself, and then we can book an appointment to discuss your application. Um, have you got an apprenticeship in health and social care? Um, at the moment, we're not delivering the health and social care apprenticeship. Um, but one of the links that I went through earlier on is a platform where you can apply for apprenticeships throughout the whole country. Um, so I would suggest if you're interested in health and social care is first of all, speak to our health and social care department who might be able to go through their program. Um, if you're set on, on apprenticeships, what I would say is visit the Recruit and Apprenticeship Service to see if you can apply for a health and social care apprenticeship on there. Um, so the next question is, how do we apply? Um, so I would suggest the best way to apply is to give us a call directly um, so we can book an appointment or you can send an, us an email and we can book you an appointment to have the discussion about the apprenticeships and what you're interested in, um, find out what job roles you're interested in, find out you know, what you're looking to do. And then from there, we can kind of run through the process to make sure that we can start to progress your application and then find you the right apprenticeship programme. The next question is, do you guys do hair and beauty? Um, we currently don't offer hair and beauty, but I would give you the same advice in that if you could go on the recruit and apprenticeship service or contact the hair and beauty department within the college, they'll be able to go through the courses with you that we do offer at the college. Um, again, if you're certain apprenticeships, the recruit and apprenticeship service would be a good place to go to. Um, somebody asked, what age can you start the railway engineering apprenticeship? Um, so when it comes to apprenticeships, as long as you're over the age of 16, you can start an apprenticeship at any time. Um, so I'd say age isn't a barrier. Um, I think we're about to run out of time. Um, so I'm going to direct you to my email address, um, which my direct email address address is sean.murphy at barnetsouthgate.ac.uk but I'll also type it in the box for you as well so that if you do want to contact us directly you can email me and we can book you an appointment and I'll also put in the apprenticeship account as well so if I'm unavailable to get um, getting back to you straight away one of my colleagues can pick up the email and call you as well Um, yeah, so if you've got any more questions or if you want to book an appointment to meet with us or if you want to apply for an apprenticeship, please get in contact with us. Um, I'd like to thank you all for joining me today. Um, 